Hi everyone, welcome to the tutorial. Uh, what I'm going to be looking at today is using Ableton's Multiband Dynamics to process old uh, jungle breaks and just tighten them up and go from something like this uh, to this. So you can hear it's got a much fuller, tighter sound. Um, and I tend to use this a lot when I'm doing drum and bass kind of stuff, but you could apply it to anything where you're using kind of sampled uh, break beats or you know, any kind of drum loop really. Um, so the sample is from, um, some, it's a free sample pack actually, I'll put the link up, it's Blue Mar 10 released it, just loads of uh, samples from old uh, jungle records, um, really worth getting. Uh, but the first thing I notice with this break, it's quite loose, it's got lots of like, high end wash and I just want to give it a slightly tighter sound. So have a look at the channel strip then, what I'm going to be using mainly is the multiband dynamics. Um, I've got an EQ compressor saturator, which I have by default on any every channel. You can just right click in Live 9 and set as default. And I do this because I tend to use these um, devices all the time, so it's just quicker for me to just access them. So the first thing I'm going to do is just actually work with the EQ. Um, and I want to pull the kick drum out a little bit. So I'm just going to go for one of the bell filters. I'm going to use the audition mode. And what this will let me do is really focus on the kick drum. Just hold down Alt, I can tighten up the cue. And then just pull the gay down a bit. Okay, that's okay for now. I'll probably come back to this later on because what I'm going to do with the dynamic, the multiband dynamics is going to change it quite a bit. So I'll wait and see. I might give it a bit of drive as well and just turn soft clipping on. Okay, that's enough for now. I don't want to overdo it down here because, yeah, like I said, multiband dynamics is where I'm really going to do all the work. So pull the multiband dynamics in. Um, so this is a really, really good plugin. Um, I mean, in the manual, it talks about being used for mastering, which is fine, but it's actually a really good way of um, editing and, you know, kind of refixing um, audio, especially stuff like this that's like a drum loop that's got lots of different frequencies like low, mid and high and, and this is actually capable of working with three bands so we have low, mid and high so it's really good for this. Um, what is it? It's actually a, it's a compressor and an expander but what's really useful with it is it can do both upward and downward compression and expansion. So just to give you an example what that means, if I focus on the high end now, just solo it, I could do downward compression by setting my threshold here and then pulling down and we can hear that I'm squashing the, um, the, uh, the high end. I could go the other way and do expansion and you'll see the difference in the little meet the little bars there. We see the orange bar and the little yellow bar. So the um, yellow bar represents the input signal and the orange bar represents the output signal. So we can see we're making it louder than the original input signal whereas compression puts a gap between it. So the output is actually quieter than the um, input signal. Okay, um, so that's upwards and downwards compression, but then at the bottom here we can work with, so that's upwards and downwards expansion, sorry. So what we can do here is we can do some upwards compression. So what happens now is I set the threshold around here, and if I drag up, I'm making the signals um, underneath the threshold louder. So that's, that's upward compression because it's, it's still compressing, it's reducing the dynamic range. Um, whereas this way was downwards compression, it was making the louder signals quieter. But the really useful thing uh, that I like the most is doing the um, downwards expansion and what this does is any signal below the threshold, it actually makes it quieter but you can adjust how quiet it is. And this gives you almost like a gated sound but it's a little bit smoother and because you've got three frequency bands then you can get some really interesting results. So let's just take this off solo and what I'm going to do is first of all set the threshold for the high end. So high end I want to really tighten up a little bit uh, and I'll probably do the same down here. You can actually use shift and you can drag them all at the same time which is quite cool. And then I'll start pulling down so I'm doing downward expansion on the top end and we can hear already it's got a slightly gated sound, but it's not as harsh as a gate. A gate can almost have a very on-off effect depending on your you know attack and release settings. Okay, and let's do the same with the the mid. I'm just 
going to have a listen to the mid actually. I might tweak the um, crossover frequency just so I'm getting the kind of mid bits of this actual drum loop in. And there you can go, I'm really, I've gone all the way there, so I'm really pulling everything down. If I go any higher, I'll completely lose the top end. And we can adjust the attack and release for these as well, so I can make it a, um, a slightly shorter release, a sharper attack. Okay, I'll leave that back where it was though. I might compress the bottom end a little bit as well. So just do some downward compression just on the kick drum. Yeah, that's okay. And as you're doing this, it's gonna be different for every loop you work with, depending on what you want to do, but just keep A being it, you know, turn it off and just check what you're doing is actually making a you know, positive difference. Uh, that's better already for me because it's got a much tighter sound. If you wanted a bit more of the top end to come out, you can just, you know, change the ratio, like how much downwards expansion you're doing and get it just right to what you think it should be. Okay, that's cool. The other thing I might do is switch it to peak mode uh, rather than RMS. Peak mode works uh, better with sharp transients so it'll be good when you're working with um, breaks. Uh, RMS will respond um, slightly slower um, compared to uh, peak mode set with better for a beat. Okay, I've got a compressor over here as well. I'm not really using it at the minute. Um, I might sometimes use that on, on something like this just because even though I'm using a technically a dynamics processor here, sometimes you, you can change this so much that it can be a, just a little bit of an easier fix to just kind of bring it back a little bit if you've gone a bit too far but it's just easier with a single band compressor so if you do go a bit too far then you can just turn this on and compress the overall signal a bit if you need to i don't think i need to at this stage so i'll leave it off for now so yeah it, uh, that, that's basically what we're doing is just working with the multiband dynamics downwards expansion and i'm using uh, downwards compression as well uh, but mainly just to reduce the the top end, but to still make it sound like a a consistent beat. Not that I don't want it to sound like it's been chopped up and, and gated, and it's it's just got a much more natural sound to it. Okay, I'll put the project. Um, I'll put a link to the project if you want to download it and have a try. Um, then you can do that. But it should be straightforward. Um, just just you can just use the multiband dynamics on its own. You don't need to use the other. Um, stuff to get started with. Okay, enjoy.